My name is Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted the Lord of the Forest. Well, there he was on a hill to the side of the path as we were walking through Pennypack Preserve. We were on our way home on the late afternoon from a fall hike, and the buck deer stood and watched us. He was on a hill to the side of the path, and he seemed to be claiming it proudly looking out like the lord of the forest. I took a quick photo, and I vowed to paint him. Working with hazy light, piles of sticks, a splendid large animal, were all challenges. And trying to create an atmosphere with watercolor. Well, I learned a lot as I painted this. I hope you enjoy watching how I took on this challenge. And I'd like to hear how you would have done it yourself. Please share in your comments at the end of the video. Now let's paint. I began with a sketch. It took me a while to get the deer right because I'd never really painted one before. I had a slice of tree so I used that to mark where I wanted to put the sun. The sun was coming in low through the trees and it needed just the right placement. I wanted to catch the light and also block out some sticks in a big pile that was in the front of the painting so I could paint around them and try to show the disorder and disarray of that big pile of sticks in the foreground. I'm also lighting up the sides of all the trees that are facing that sun. I'm lighting up his antlers and how I'm lighting it up is by applying masking fluid so I can preserve some clean whites. Anywhere the sun might come through and hit the animal and the trees, sparkle on the tops of the sticks, I'm applying the masking fluid. Now it's interesting when the sun comes in like this, it's going to hit one side of the trees on one side and on the other side, the trees are going to be hit on the other side because that's how it's striking them. Once I had everything marked in with masking that I wanted, I splattered on some masking in the foreground just to pick up little dots of light. When it was dry, I sprayed the whole thing down with some water and began with my lightest golds. Anywhere I thought the sun might be hitting, I touched in some of these light golds. I didn't start with the deer, I started with the background. So that was yellow ochre and my next color coming in was burnt sienna. Indigo came in next. And then just a little bit of magenta. There's some Payne's gray coming in because there was a lot of gray in the picture. But when I looked closely, I could also see a lot of purple. And then that rusty color was coming through. You know, when you mix together paints in the rusty or orange family with the purple family, you end up getting mauve. Mauve is a very interesting color to work with. It feels like a fall color, a cool weather color to me. What do you think? Now, since I had that masking in place on the sticks in the front, I could paint right over top of them and preserve the individual forms of the sticks. I'd never painted a pile of sticks before. I wanted to make it look sort of realistic and interesting because it was right in the foreground. You could see a lot of mauve on the left side of the painting where the purple and the burnt sienna has mixed.
The indigo adds the darks in that section. And I continue the yellow ochre gold, the glow, down anywhere where the sunlight might be hitting, including the tops of the weeds. Trying to make the weeds look natural, bringing darks in between for individual blades of weedy grass. When my water started getting dry and the background not nice and moist, I wet it down again and then continued to paint in the background. As my trees go back into space, I am letting them be much more blurry and less sharp by painting wet into wet. And I'm mainly using indigo and Payne's gray. Now I'm building up colors in the middle ground of the background. and adding some strong darks for contrast. Because I'm not going to get strong lights standing out if I don't have some strong darks to set them off. You can see I'm mixing in some purple lake. I'm mixing in indigo. And I'm bringing in burnt sienna. Where the colors blend together, they make some mauve. There's not a lot of green in this painting, but I did use a little bit of sap green in some areas. And there's a bit of cobalt blue coming in as well. Putting that blue around the deer makes the background recede and will make the deer stand out more. It's also setting up a complementary color scheme because the deer will be sort of orangish tan and the blue is a nice opposite. There's a very low slope from left to right. And I'm trying to show that by painting the horizon lower on the left side and higher on the right side around the weeds and bushes that are coming up. Now I'm getting quite loose and just sketching in with my brush different weeds and different grasses coming up around a pile of sticks. Building up color and trying to make it look natural. A little bit of splatter here and there for weed heads. And trying to create a little shadowed hill by putting in a dark above this set of weeds on the right. Now the sky has to go all the way up, so I had to add some water to the top of the painting and come in with some grays and some shadowy colors into those areas so the trees would stand out where they were lit up. And remember, all that masking is still on there. I'm using some blues. I'm using some sap green. I'm using some Payne's gray. And I'm bringing in a little bit of magenta and purple. 
because I like how that plays with the light in the yellow ochre for sunlight. Now, if you look at the sun right through the trees as it's shining, it appears that the outside edges of the sun seem to be sort of white and yellow and a little bit pink. At least in my photograph, they did. So that's one of the reasons for using the magenta. Coming into the foreground pile of sticks, I'm outlining the shadowed side of each stick with a thin line of indigo and Payne's gray. I've also mixed a little purple in to make a good dark color. I figure this will give me a good marker for when I take the masking off and when I do some shadows and some blending. Once that's done, I begin to work on the deer. First, I'm adding some color to his antlers, a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, and trying to leave some white gleams. The edges of his body where the light is being directly uh, reflected are yellow ochre and some quin gold. And I'm using some sepia for his darker shadowed areas because they were in very strong contrast where the light was not reaching. This is the first buck I ever painted. I've painted a couple of does. And I'm trying hard to get it right, a little bit at a time. The body is a mix of raw umber and burnt sienna with yellow ochres where it's lighter. And I'm adding a first layer of color. There will be more going on. As I paint, I'm trying to show his muscles and body structure as well. And we're working back into those weeds. They took a lot of work, a lot of strokes of the brush in those areas. Now I'm back to working on the deer and refining his antlers. Trying to sharpen them up just a little bit. And I just can't see what I'm doing at this point with the masking in the way. So I begin to take some of the masking off his face. That allows me to work around the base of his antlers where they join his head and begin to detail his nose and his eyes because he's looking straight at us. I am using a very small brush. And once I get those features marked on, I color in his face, except where he's supposed to be a little bit white. I sharpen the areas around his head as well. Now that the masking is removed, I can get in close and define all the parts of the animal's head. And the same thing around the antlers. By putting a little dark around his back and his body, the deer will stand out more. It's 
So I have a basic set of colors in at this point. It's all refining. And it's an awful lot of tree painting as well. What's happening now is I am beginning to work on the forest behind the deer. I'm beginning by painting far away trees that are faded in light and putting in some branches. Once that's established, I could take off some of the masking and see what my weeds are going to look like and my sticks in the front area. Masking can be difficult to get off. Here I'm trying to use an old clean rag. It looks like it's working fast and well, but I can tell you in reality I had to use my fingers, erasers, and a lot of other things as well. Now with the sun unmasked, you could see a big white circle, and it has very hard edges, and it just looks terrible. So the first thing I began to do is soften the sun, soften the rays that I made coming out of it with masking. And I'm softening it with a damp brush and then blotting with a paper towel. This is working out quite well as some of the paint lifts around those hard edges. I'm trying to make the sunlight look like it's diffused by the damp air and that atmosphere of the fall day. I've decided to make this front tree a sycamore tree. And sycamore trees have a lot of different colors on their bark, and their bark is quite broken up and blotchy. It's very interesting to look at, and a fun thing to paint. So I'm using different colors in the bark. The tree is going directly in front of the sun, and directly next to the sun, or the most affected by the sun's lights. The colors become extremely washed out. And in my photograph, they looked very gold and very pink magenta around the edges. The other trees close to the sun are faded in color. Now you could turn your camera to look right at the sun and take a picture, but you can't sit and stare at it, so we'll take the camera's word. Once I've worked on the trees in the forest for a little while, I move into the pile of sticks in the front. Just for something different to work with. Each stick, as it moves away from the light and into shadow, is getting a shadowing or shading on the side of it. And in many, I'm blending it into the lighter area with a damp brush. This took a lot of time. <laughs> it was interesting to work with. Have you ever painted a pile of sticks? You gotta remember which one's overlapping, which one's going on top. And it's almost like walking a labyrinth or painting a labyrinth. With the sticks, Mostly done, I move back into the forest behind the deer and begin to define more trees. These are the trees that are a little closer up as well as the ones in the middle ground. I'm painting them subtly different colors so that one tree might have more indigo in it 
and one tree might have more purple in it. They're all basically gray trees, but some of them are touched by magenta. Some of them are touched by yellow ochre. And some of them have a strong burnt sienna in them. I'm trying to, d to vary my trees in width and in branch work and in how they are growing so that they look interesting and like a natural and real forest, not all the same. I'm also working to keep my trees asymmetrical and not all lined up in a straight row, but more at random placement. When you move into a forest scene, most of your trees are going to be quite tall and most likely on the narrow side because they have to put all their energy into reaching light and so getting quite tall as opposed to getting real wide or massive. That takes many, many more years. They also don't get a lot of branches till they reach closer to the sky because that's where they're going to gather most of their their sunlight and most of their nourishment. At the same time I'm painting in the trees, I'm also darkening around the base of the trees. And I'm continuing to darken the shattered side of each tree. Once I'm satisfied with the background trees, I begin working on the one tree in the near foreground, right behind the pile of sticks. The side toward the sunlight is much lighter in color and moving away is much darker, but I'm trying to show some texture in the bark as well. Now it's got that one branch sticking out and as the branch moves closer and closer to the sunlight the colors seem to fade out. So it becomes much paler. And at this point, I'm working around the background on a regular basis, continuing to darken and shade the trees. This tree is getting some detail because it's a little closer to the front of the painting. And here's a second layer going on to the foreground tree. And you can see it's starting to sharpen up and get much more vivid because it is so close to the viewer. I take that same dark color and I'm painting in between some of the sticks to make the foreground more vivid. And moving back to the deer, I am darkening adding another layer of color to the deer and continuing to enhance his anatomy and where the muscles are. I'm softening the white lines where the masking was and then getting in sharp to detail his antlers. Again, I'm using a very small brush and taking a lot of time. The prongs of the antlers crisscross. Some go in front of others and some come outward, and some go backward, and I have to get all those markings right, just like I did with the sticks. It's a little confusing 
It takes a lot of concentration. back to the forest and getting the trees more closely adjusted to what I think they need. Also working with the bushes along the middle ground there. And bringing out some good strong shadows in the antlers so they'll stand out as well. I decided to deepen some of the darkest darks and shadows. So I mixed together some indigo with some sepia, and I'm going in and really bringing out some deeps. I've also taken some quin gold and lit up some of the yellows in the background. And I'm starting to feel like the light is getting just right for what I was trying to show. At this point I am now softening all of my remaining hard edges with a damp brush and a paper towel. And I'm doing this to try to get the light just right. A few final strokes of the weeds to add just a little more grassy feel. Final details on the antlers. A little bit of spatter and I was blocking from keeping the spattering going where I didn't want it to go with the paper. And it's done and I'm signing. I hope you enjoyed my video, The Lord of the Forest. If you could hit a like, a thumbs up, and ring the bell on the links below, you won't miss any future videos. There's other links below to my Facebook art page, my blog, my products that I like to use, and some art products that I make and sell at Pixels and Fine Art America. I'd enjoy hearing from what your, your thoughts in the comments below as well. And you could tell me about any animals that you've painted. I sure learned a lot painting this one. I'd enjoy hearing what you learned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.